هيا هيا شكوة الإيمان هيا لسبيل الله ما أهدى المنية هيا هيا إخوة الإيمان هيا لسبيل الله ما أهل المنية As they say often, I came from a Muslim family or my family is Muslim. I am born Muslim. No, it is a ni'mah. It is a blessing. And you need to show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost. You, as a Muslim, you have that knowledge that all the disbelievers, many of the disbelievers, many of those that have not been guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that knowledge that they don't have, you have that. You have that knowledge. You know about this life. You know about the realities. You know actually what this life, this dunya is all about. If you read the Qur'an. If you read the book of Allah. If you studied the seerah. If you studied the ahadith or the narrations from the Prophet wasallam, You know what this dunya is really all about. What this life is really all about. This dunya. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes as lahu. Amusement or passing time. Lahu. Vain talk. Zina. Adornment. And it is all an illusion. Mata'ul ghurur. It is going away. It is a, a delusion. It is going by quickly. It is passing in front of your eyes. That's this, this life. This is what it's all about. And you know that reality. And even the disbelievers, they know to some extent. But many of them are ghafil. Many of them are heedless until it's too late. Until their lives come to an end. Until they have left this dunya. And then the ultimate regret sets in. May Allah save us from that. billah. So you have this knowledge, you have much knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you with, as a Muslim, as a person, a mu'min, a believer with iman, with knowledge of the book of Allah, and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know that this life is temporary. You should know that, O oh youth, O oh young gentlemen, O oh young sisters, akhawati fillah, ikhwati fillah, you know exactly what this life is all about. You as a Muslim. How it is only temporary. How it is passing away in front of your eyes. From elementary school, to junior high, to high school, to college, to graduation, to marriage, to having children, to having grandchildren, to getting old, to the gray showing up in your hair. The gray hairs showing up, and so on. It is all passing by. And it is temporary, this life. And you can't take anything with you. Like the kuffar, like the disbelievers. Like many of the youth from the non-Muslims. How they are influenced by music. They are influenced by movies. Fantasy. Imagination. Not reality. They are influenced by the movies and the music, the glimmer and the glamour of, of this life, which is temporary, which it goes away. You may lose it in an instance. You may lose it and you may be from the lowest of the low after being high up or having status, having prestige and honor amongst your homeboys as they say. Amongst your peers, amongst your friends who you thought also that were there forever. That this bond or this relationship that you have with them. And most of them are rebellious and transgressors against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You thought that bond was forever, but it's lost and it goes away. And you lose your possessions. And you lose what you may have. And the ultimate loss or khasara is the loss of life. It's not like the movies. Oh you youth, my brothers, my sisters. The loss of life in an instant 
in an instant, the loss of life, and there's no second chance, there's no coming back, like in the movies, like in the gangster movies, like in the action movies. He's not coming back for another movie. He's not coming back in the next show or in the next series. He's not coming back again. This is reality. This is the real life of this dunya. Once you leave here, it is all over. And it is akhirah. It is hereafter. It is time to be taken account of. And that's why the early salaf, when I say salaf, the ones that came before us, the righteous salaf, the righteous predecessors, those that came before us, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, or Ali, even the youth, like Abdullah ibn Abbas, like Abdullah ibn Az-Zubayr, radiallahu anhum ajma'in, may Allah be pleased with all of them. Youth, young ones, do you know that one of the leaders of one of the armies of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a young boy by the name of Usama, very young, a young boy leading the army of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, put there by, by him, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How could we remove him, O oh, Umar? How can we remove him, O oh, Umar, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam appointed him, specifically Usama? A young boy. And many stories from the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. Those around the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not being influenced by this dunya. Even at a young age. Youth. Young. Not being influenced. Not being taken away by this life. By this dunya which is temporary. Always remember that. Remember three things that when you die will follow the son of Adam. And I like to mention this always as a reminder for myself and all of you. In this life, this reality, this dunya which is passing away, three things that you will take with you, and it sounds nice. Three things that you will take with you to your grave when you die. And that is your family, your relatives, your loved ones, your husbands, your wives, your brothers, your sisters, your friends, your peers, your gang. They will follow you to the grave when you die. Your possessions, the gold chains, the gold, the possessions, the money, the wealth, the possessions, the property. It will follow you. It will go, it'll go with you to your grave when you die. And your deeds, the things that you've done, all the deeds that you were, when you were held accountable for, all of those deeds that were written down by the angels, one on the left, one on the right. لا ينفض من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد. They don't say a single word except that there are angels. There are those that are writing down, recording everything that they say, every single thing. Those will all go with the person to the grave, with you and me, to the grave. We'll have something with us. We'll have companionship. But what will happen? Once the body is placed in the grave, once it's time when the grave is covered up, once it's time, that's it, the burial is over, the funeral procession is over, the janazah is over. The relatives, the family, the companions, the gang, the peers, the friends, the family will all go away. They will not join you inside the grave. They will not go with you to the barzakh. They will not go with you to that barrier between the Hereafter and the dunya, they will not go with you. They will leave your deeds, uh, rather your possessions, what you acquired, what you spent so much time and sweat and effort trying to gather in a certain kind of lifestyle, trying to imitate who? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? La. Trying to imitate who? Abdullah ibn Az-Zubayr? La. Trying to imitate Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Umar, Abu Bakr, Uthman, Ali, radiallahu an, Ali, a young boy, when he accepted La ilaha illallah, and he followed his cousin, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A young boy, in those early days of Islam, when they were being mistreated, when they were being harmed, and they were being tortured, you remember Bilal, radiallahu an, young, ahadun ahad, ahadun ahad, with a rock on his chest, in the heat of the sun, in the middle of the day. All you have to do is turn back and say, I don't follow the religion of Muhammad. But what did he say? Ahadun ahad, ahadun ahad. One 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawheed! So those things, possessions, what were you trying to, to imitate? What were you trying to follow? You were trying to acquire those things by any means necessary, all of your effort, and leaving the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Leaving the way that is guaranteed for you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you trust Allah? Do you really believe in Allah? Do you trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? All the promises that He has promised for His servants, وَوَعَدُهُ حَقْ And His promise is true. Do you trust that? Do you believe that? Are you relying upon that? Do you trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you really believe? Do you have that iman that is fortified in your heart? That is solid in your heart? That you will gain those things. But you have to take a certain path. You have to take a certain way. The sabil of the mu'mineen. The sabil or the way of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The way of, of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To the ridwan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To Jannah, to paradise. And seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yawm al-qiyamah in Jannah. For the believers. For a select few. So that money, that clothing, that jewelry, those cars and those friends, it is temporary and they are going away. They are leaving and they have already left some of them. And every one of us knows, the youth especially, so much of those things have left and we have lost already. And it really is worthless. It is worthless. The one who strived and he struggled in a certain lifestyle, trying to imitate, trying to copy again as we go back to it. Trying to copy who? The movie stars, the rap stars, the gangster stars, and so on. A certain lifestyle, which is based on what? Which is based on everything other than the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet And this is one of the ultimate musibas, one of the ultimate tragedies for our communities, for our youth. Imagine the tragedy. Imagine the distress that one feels when he goes to, let's say, imagine, Mecca al-Mukarramah. Or he goes to the beloved city of the Prophet ﷺ, al-Madina, to do his Umrah, to do Hajj, to do Ziyarah, to do worship, Ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to get the hundred thousand Salawat in Masjid al-Haram. To get the thousand salawat in the Masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you see youth that are from there with certain clothing that you would never believe. With certain actions, with certain attributes to the way they walk, to the way they're trying to talk, to the way they're trying to carry themselves, you would never believe. They are trying to imitate someone. Where did they get this from? The influence even has reached there? Unfortunately, yes. Movies, magazines, movies and television, and music. What a musibah. Ask someone who lived in the jahiliyyah before, before they became Muslim. Ask about music. What a curse it is. That up to this day, even though they have become Muslim, they have bear, bore witness to La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And I know this from experience. And it's still a curse. You hear it in the malls, you hear it in the stores, you hear it in places of wherever you are, waiting, standing, and the music is playing. And once it hits your ears, if you were stuck upon music, if you were addicted to music, it still comes to you, and you still know the lyrics, and you still have that tendency. It's a curse, Iwallah. And the person has to strive, the person has to struggle, and that's part of this life. You will be tested. You will be tested with certain things, with certain different things, each one tested with certain things.
by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How, how strong is your iman? How strong is your belief, your faith? How strong is your tawakkul, your trust in Allah azza wa jal? How strong or how willing are you to follow the commands and the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You should start when you're young. You should start when you are a youth. It's an easy, or it's a, what do they say? It's something right off the bat that you shouldn't even have to think about so much. That you don't even know how long you're going to live. How long you're going to stay in this life, in this dunya, which we know again. الحمد, the reality of it. You don't know when the angel of death is going to come knocking. And say it's your time. You are not one of the prophets or one of the messengers. You are not Musa alayhi salam to send the angel of death back. This is only for a select few. The, the, the rusul, the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses that upon them or gives that to them, a miracle from Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are not one of them. When the angel of death comes and it's time to go, O oh Muhammad, O oh Adam, O oh, uh, Zayd, it's time to go. Fatima, Zainab, it's time to go. That's it. No turning back. No coming back in the next movie. After you get shot. After you get killed. After you die a death in the street, in the gutter, in the sewer. And so on. There's no coming back. And you have to remember a rule. The Prophet ﷺ said in more than one narration, the person will be or the person will leave this life, the person's death will be upon what he was upon. According to what he was all about, in a sense. What his lifestyle was all about. You want to now come on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, reciting the Qur'an, an easy hisab, an easy accountability, you have to live that lifestyle. You want to come now on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, and have an easy accountability, you have to live that lifestyle. That you were worried about it. You used to think about it in this dunya while you had your breath, while you had your life, while you still had your soul, your ruh. You had to have lived that lifestyle. There are seven. Sada' يُضِلُّهُمْ اللَّهُ فِي ضِلِّهِ يَوْمَ لَا ضِلَّ إِلَّا ضِلُّ There are seven categories or types of people that used to do certain things that Allah will shade them under His throne on a day when there will be no shade except that shade. One of them is the one who grew up in Islam. He grew up on the deen. He grew up on Qiraatul Qur'an. He grew up on taqwa. He grew up on iman. He grew up on haya, modesty, and manners, and adab, and proper akhlaq, good behavior. He grew up also his heart was attached to the masajid. He grew up like that. His lifestyle was all about that. Are we saying that you have to have, oh my youth, my sons, my daughters, are we saying that you have to live a life like which is dull, boring in a sense, where you cannot do anything, everything is haram. La. Always remember the haram, it is way less then the halal. The halal outweighs the haram. This attitude of everything is haram. And I can't do anything. This is not the attitude of the mu'min, of the believer, of the person who believes in la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. You are entitled. You are allowable, allowed to have entertainment, to play sports, to exercise your body, to play sports, to do those things. But never forget your duties to your Lord. Never forget your duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first thing that you have to remember now, the youth especially, all of us, but the youth especially, that order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, constantly throughout the book of Allah, to have taqwa of Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Consciousness. This fear of Allah azza wa jal, it has to be understood, especially to the youth. Talk to them from an early age. Taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah is the one that is always watching. He knows what is in the hearts of the alameen of all of the entire world. He knows what's in the hearts. 
While me and you, while me and him, while me and so and so are sitting beside you, we don't know what's in your heart. We don't know whether you're sincere. We don't know whether you really mean it. Your istighfar, your tawbah, your repentance, you're asking Allah to forgive. Forgive you. We don't know if you're sincere, but only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that. That's taqwa. That's part of taqwa. Part of taqwa. Fear of Allah. Consciousness, awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Part of taqwa, a meaning. One of the meanings of taqwa. Taking care of something today, or staying away, or fixing something today, so you don't have to worry about it tomorrow. When is tomorrow? Anybody know? When is tomorrow? What are we talking about? Yawmul Qiyamah. Worrying about something now? In this life, while you still have the chance? Being aware, being conscious, making sure, checking yourself constantly on a regular basis, making it a habit, like you make other things a habit. Like you go to your friend's house every day. You make sure that you don't miss that phone call. You make sure that you don't miss that appointment at the mall. You make sure that you don't miss when that new item comes out of the store, the new type of shoe, or the new type of dress or clothing. You make sure that you don't miss those things. Make sure that you don't miss these opportunities of constantly checking yourself, evaluating yourself, making hisab, accountability. The fool is the one who doesn't make accountability of himself now while he has the chance. Because tomorrow, and again, what's tomorrow? Yawm al qiyamah There will be accountability of you. You have no choice. When your name is called, when it's your time, and you're, it's time for you to read your book, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already knows, when it's time for that, there will be no time to make accountability of yourself, to fix yourself, to mend yourself, to start doing something, to start praying, to start behaving a certain way, to leave certain friends, companions, those people, imagine, وَلَعِيَذُ billah In Surah Al-Furqan, there will be those on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, on the Day of Judgment, that they will bite their fingers. I should not have taken so-and-so as a friend. I shouldn't have taken so-and-so as a companion. They shouldn't have been my gang. They shouldn't have been my homeboys. They shouldn't have been my friends. And they will bite their fingers in regret, ultimate regret. Well, ayyadu billah. With Allah from that. Who wants to come like that on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, on the Day of Judgment? Oh my youth! Look to what you're doing right now. Look to who you're spending time with. Look to where they're taking you. Are they taking you to the Ridwan of Allah, the pleasure of Allah? Are they taking you to the Sunnah, to following Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? In him, in, in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have the best example, the most noble character, the highest standard of character. Khuluqun azim. Uswatun hasana. You have the best example. Why would you go to now so and so? Number 23, or so and so, who has the top 10 pop chart title, who's the most popular movie star today. Why would you try to imitate them and they don't even care about you? And they can take you nowhere but Jahannam. That's the reality. It sounds sometimes like we talk or we don't understand. The older, the elder people. They don't understand. We, you don't understand what I'm going through. But this is the reality. Can you explain to me any other way? When you try to imitate someone, when you try to imitate a certain way, whether it's a walk, whether it's a talk, you change the way you talk, bad language, foul language, a certain type of way of talking, of carrying yourself, arrogance, kibr, that the Prophet ﷺ warned about, that shows that you love that thing and anything else you're not pleased with. It's not good. It's not likable. You're not pleased with it. You don't like it. You don't want to be like that. You want to be like this. What else is it? You know, it, it's, it's heart-wrenching. I was born here. I grew up here again. And you've heard this so many times from me. But when our youth who came from another country even. They were born somewhere else. They were born in 
the Khalij in the Gulf, in the Arab countries, in Somalia, in India. And they come here. And they're trying to walk a certain way, trying to talk a certain way, trying to behave a certain way, copying movies, copying the music videos and the music and so on. That's an evidence. Think about it again. That you love this way, you love this way, and you don't like that way. You don't like the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. It's not good enough. It's not in. It's not the fashion. It's not cool. But this is not the attitude to have. And you have to work with yourself. What's one way you can do it? It may not sound pleasing at first, or it's not easy at first. But you have to look at the company that you have. The company that you have, the group that you're with, those that you're with, you have to look at that. Where are they taking you? What are they influencing you to do? What kind of environment are they living? What kind of environment are they giving off? What kind of vibe are they giving off? Think about it. Are they trying to follow Abu Bakr and Umar? Are they trying to follow Abdullah bin Zubair? Abdullah bin Zubair, from some narration, some of the stories, they say he was a young boy, I'm not sure if it was, again, seven years old or nine years old, on the horse, on the back, holding on to his dad in the battle. On the same horse with his father, as Zubair, in one of the battles, Abdullah. Imagine. Do we think about this? Other Sahabis, young ones, trying to follow the, the Prophet wasallam, trying to be there to give, to help the Prophet wasallam, do things for him. Imagine, one of the Sahabis, a young boy, and the Prophet wasallam did the blood cupping, wasallam, the blood cupping where they sucked the blood out of the back or certain areas, if anybody has ever heard of it. And one of the little companions, Abdullah bin Abbas, I believe, radiallahu anhuma. He was there, the Prophet ﷺ told him, take this blood and get rid of it and put it somewhere where nobody can find it. Nobody can see it. So Abdullah bin Abbas, he takes it and he goes out. And he comes back and the Prophet ﷺ asks him what he did with it and he's smiling. And he said, I couldn't put it or the blood of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa how sacred, how he felt towards the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa knowing who he is, Rasulullah, and he drank it. And he put it where someone couldn't find it. And the love that they had for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Abdullah bin Umar, a young boy, he was young, and he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa one time say, if only they were walking, by the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ, by one of the certain doors or the entrances to the Prophet's masjid. And he heard the Prophet ﷺ say, Law, in Arabic, Law, if only we were to leave this door only for the women. He didn't order it, he didn't order and say that we should leave that door or go and make it the door only for the women. He said, if only we would leave this door for the women. He heard that, Abdullah bin Umar. He heard that. And for the next 70 something years in Medina, Abdullah bin Umar was one of the few Sahabi that stayed in Medina for his entire life. He was a young boy when he heard the Prophet ﷺ say that. And then for the next 70 plus years, he never, ever, ever entered that door. He never used that door because of what he heard the Prophet ﷺ say. You see imitating, you see following, you see love for who? For these people that. You know, it's, it's distressing sometimes. These rap stars or these music stars, these so-called stars that died in the street, died getting shot over what? Over a record, over something somebody supposedly said, and so on. And our youth, some of them want a tragedy. They want to be like that. I want to go finish him off. One brother came to me in the masjid recently. And somebody tried to shoot him, another Muslim, so-called Muslim, background Muslim. And he's a Muslim, so-called background Muslim. 
Fear Allah before your life comes to an end. How? He wants permission. Is it allowed in the Sharia? They shot at me. I'm still alive. They shot me in the leg. They were trying to finish me off. Can I go now and finish him or look for him and finish him before he comes back again? Allah must have. I literally wanted to cry just about. I tried to advise him. I haven't seen him since. But what, what is the mentality? What are they thinking? What are they being influenced by? Not by Abu Bakr or Umar. Not by the Prophet wasallam, Not by Al-Islam. And even the group that you hang with, the group that you hang around with, that environment that you put yourself in, you would, you would be surprised sometimes that if you start, if you take the lead, and you go to the masjid, or you start speaking out and saying that we shouldn't be doing this, there's no way we should be doing this. Rather, we should go here and we should go to the lecture and we should start praying. You would be surprised sometimes how they will follow you, even if it's just one. Now, and then somebody else later because he sees that a few of them are practicing now and so on. You would be surprised. Don't you need the edge? Don't you need the reward? What can you lose? Imagine if somebody now is guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through you. Everything he does when he recites the Al-Fatiha, when he prays, when he makes dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he enjoys the good and forbids the evil, you also take reward for that. Don't you need that? Wouldn't you like, wouldn't we like to take that with us to the akhirah, to the hereafter? Our deeds, not being ghafil all the time, There's a story. We're talking about taqwa. We're talking about the way they were, the early Muslims. Fearing a day, not paying attention so much to the dunya that, and holding it worthless. There's nothing in this dunya that's worth dying for. The Prophet ﷺ used to say, I wish I could be martyred for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and come back alive and then die again and come back alive and die again. He said that sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Thinking about the Akhirah, teaching us, advising us, admonishing us that this dunya, and ask anybody, ask anybody who's already lived 60 years, 70 years, how important, how valuable the time is, and that it's, it's only numbered now. You're not going to live forever here in this life. And unfortunately, some Muslims, a lot of the youth, are living as if they're going to stay here forever and the Akhirah doesn't exist. Like it's not real. It's only stories or it's only narrations. It's not reality. And this dunya is totally absolute reality and it's going to be forever and we're going to stay here forever. We're going to have a long, long life. This is shaitan fooling those people. There's a story of a young boy during the time of Umar radiallahu anhu masjid. And remember we said one of those people that will be shaded under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a day when there's no shade except the shade. One of those is that his heart was attached to the masajid. And what a place to be. What a place to be in the masajid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The angels they spread their wings. The rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down, even if you just sit here now on the wall. And even if you're just kind of not even concentrating on the lecture here now, even. You're maybe thinking about other things, but you're here. You're sitting in the masjid. The angels, they lower their wings. The rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down on those people in that gathering, at that majlis. The sakina. The tranquility from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down upon those people. The people in the masajid. The people studying the Qur'an. So this young boy during the time of Umar radiallahu anhu, always yutalazim, yulazimul masjid. And this is mentioned by Ibn Kathir in his tafsir. After Isha, what did he used to do? Imagine, birrul walidain. 
You have such an opportunity, especially the youth, but it's not only the youth. You have parents alive, it's such an opportunity to gain hasanat, to gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to gain rizq. Everybody's worried about, I have to be at work, I have to work, I have to go to work extra, I have to do overtime. The Prophet ﷺ said that with birrul walidain and even silatul rahm, that's maintaining the ties of relationship, maintaining the ties of, of relatives, of kinship, then your risk will be increased. Your lifespan will be longer. It's up to you. Do you trust the Prophet ﷺ? Do you trust what he said from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This young boy after Isha, what did he used to do? He used to go visit his old father, Shaykh Al-Kabir. One time on the way there, he passed by a young woman. Oh, young guys. Not only the young guys, but especially the young guys. After Salat Al-Isha, that time when the moon is out, nice, it's dark. Some of the eyes, they can't see. And if you're far away, you can't see what's going on over there. He passed by a young woman, this young man, youth. She came across in a provocative manner, in a seductive way. Well, Billah, do you know what the smile can do? Ya Abdullah, that look like the arrow from the bow. One word. And all of a sudden your heart is pierced. It could happen. It could be a test. So anyway, one day while he was walking, he fell for this woman. After Salat al-Isha, she invited him to the house. He was a young man. He followed to a point before entering. فَلَمَّا أَرَادَ أَنْ يَدْخُلَ الْبَيْتِ خَلْفَهَا As they were about to enter, he's behind her, he's following. She enticed him. And she's walking in front of him, and he's walking behind her. Some of the shukama, or some of the people of Adab, they used to say, Imshi wara al-asad, wa la tamshi wara al-mar'a. Walk behind the lion, the roaring lion, but don't walk behind the woman. As they are about to enter, and she's walking in front of him, and he's walking behind her, He was about to enter the house behind this young woman. فَذَكَرَ قَوْلَ اللَّهِ تَقْوَى اللَّهِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى Remembrance. Consciousness of Allah سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى He's walking now. He's following. He's going. He was about to enter this house. And he remembered the saying of Allah سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى And many of us are going to be tried. Unfortunately. Many of us are going to be tried. You're not going to be left alone like that. Just saying that you believe, that you have tawakkul, that you have trust in Allah, and that's it. You're going to be tested. That's what this life is all about. You may have to go through that clash of emotions. لا تقربوا الزنا Don't go near zina. Don't go near it. And often many people think, many of us think that when Allah said, don't go near zina, don't go near any of that illicit, or that fahisha, or that wrong doings, illicit behavior. When Allah said that, it means that don't do it. Just don't do it. Allah said don't go near it. Don't step towards it. Don't walk towards it. Don't look to it. Don't be curious. So you may have to go through that clash of emotions inside of you. Shaitan whispering. You might want to pick up the phone and your hand is itching. You might want to answer the call. Give it a chance. Curiosity. I just, I'm just curious. What does she want to say? What does she have to say? You may want to be curious. You want to ease the struggle inside of you. I will just talk to her. Only conversation. I will not meet with her. I will not go out with her. I will just talk with her and so on. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقُوَاهَا And he instilled in every nafs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that tendency towards evil and towards good. So he was about to enter the house, this young boy, and he remembered the ayah in the Qur'an. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا 
إذا مسهم طائف من الشيطان تذكروا فإذا هم مبصرون. Indeed, he was walking behind the woman, behind the girl. He was walking, and he remembered the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what means, indeed, those that fear Allah, when an impulse from shaitan touches them, they remember, and immediately they have insight. There are those, those that fear Allah. It's going to happen sometimes, an impulse from shaitan, it touches them, they remember. Tadakkaru. فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبَصِرُونَ They remember. And immediately they have insight. So they turn away. They forget about it. They leave. They go back to the masjid. They go back to the good people. They go back to the reading of the Qur'an. They go back to the salawat. And they stay away. They don't go back there again. When they are influenced by the influences of shaitan inclining towards evil, shaitan and jinn, shaitan and ins, you sudur in nas, whispering in the hearts of men, and they realize what they are about to do, tadakkaru. They have consciousness, they have awareness, they're not asleep, they're not ghafil, they're not absolutely heedless. They remember, they stop in their tracks. So this shab, he remembered this ayah, and he fainted, he passed out, and he fell to the ground. They carried him to his father. And when he came around, his father asks him, What is the matter with you? What is this verse that you remember? Because he told them, What is this ayah that you remember? What is the ayah that came to your mind? He came and he recited it to his father. He told them, he recited, Inna إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفٌ مِّنَ الشَّيْطَانِ تَذَكَّرُوا فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْصِرُونَ Indeed, those that fear Allah, when an impulse from shaitan touches them, they remember and immediately they have insight. Again, he's now just telling his father, he's reminding his father the ayah, what? What is the ayah that came to his mind when he recited it? He fainted and he passed out again and he fell to the ground. The neighbors and his relatives came shaking him, trying to revive him. But this time there was no coming back. The angel of death did what he was commanded to do. Order Amr min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Ibn Kathir rahimahullah mentions, he was taken, he was washed, and he was prepared for burial and buried at nighttime. In the morning, the matter was relayed to Umar radiallahu anhu. And Umar goes to give the condolences to the father of the boy. And then Umar is taken to the grave of the boy. And Umar is standing by the grave of that boy. And Umar says, Ya Fulan, young boy, Ya Fulan, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَان Umar recites the verse in Surah Al-Rahman. And he says to the boy in the grave, Ya Fulan, Waliman Khafa Maqama Rabbihi Jannatan. But for the one who has feared the standing before his Lord will have two gardens. Fajabahu Sawt Al Fata min al Qabr. Imagine, subhanallah, a voice came from the Qabr, from the boy in the grave. Ya Umar. قَدْ أَعْطَانِيهَا رَبِّي فِي الْجَنَّةِ مرتين. The, boy, the boy's voice answers from the grave, O Umar, verily my Lord has given me in Jannah two times. وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ It's all about that. In this life, whatever you do, it matters. It matters whatever you do in this life. It's serious. What do you hold important? How do you want to leave this life? How do you want to leave this life which is temporary and you don't know when it's going to end? Stand up in prayer in the night and start to make it a habit. You make so many things a habit. Oh, especially the youth. Get used to it now when you're young. 
You can't walk on the edge of the crocodile pool and imagine. I'm giving you an example from this dunya. You can't walk on the edge of the crocodile pool and then slip and fall in and then ask, why did I get eaten? Why did my leg get bitten off? Why did my body get torn apart and shredded and I just barely escaped by the thin string of my life? Why did it happen? You walk on the edge of it. You walk on the shore of the crocodile, whatever it is, the shark pool. And you fall in and you slip and you fall in. And you want to know why you got eaten. You want to know why you lost your limb. It's the same way. You walk a certain lifestyle now, life. you walk with certain people, you walk a certain way, you behave a certain way, you live a certain lifestyle, and then you want to know why you're blemished. Your heart is hard. You have a stain on your heart. You don't have baraka. It seems that is as if your life is so constricted and you can't breathe. And so many bad things are happening to you. You wonder why. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you to what is correct and what is right. And you take the initiative. You make the effort first to be with those that are the people of the Qur'an. That are the people of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That are the people of the Masajid. That are the people of Al-Amru bil Ma'roof wa Nahi anil Munkar. Enjoying the good and forbidding the evil. You should hate all fahisha. You should hate those things which are munkar, that are evil and despicable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should hate whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hates. This is my advice to myself first and to all of you. We need to think about our lives constantly, habitually, as a habit. Constantly. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. Send peace and blessings upon your beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah, and you should ask Allah, to allow you to join him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at his hawb, this pond that is only the pond of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yawm al-qiyamah. We ask Allah that we meet him there sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and drink from that pond, from the hawb, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and not be driven away. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us an easy reckoning, an easy hisab on yawm al-qiyamah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us our sins, our wrongdoings, our slips and our falls. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to what is correct. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala abdi wa ala abdihi wa rasulihi nabiyyina Muhammad wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.